In this video, we're talking about the direct comparison test and the case of convergence and the case of divergence. And on this slide, we're talking convergence. So the idea in this picture here is that I'm looking at a sequence of partial sums in yellow here for the series BN. And I'm saying suppose BN converges. So the sequence of partial sums is actually approaching the limit, which is in this particular picture is actually 5. And then I'm saying, suppose that I also know that every term in the series An is less than every term in the series Bn. Then it means the partial sums are as well. Every partial sum for An will lie below every partial sum for Bn. And that sequence of partial sums is increasing and bounded above, and so it's guaranteed to converge. Let's apply that real quick to a first example. And these examples get a lot trickier in the future, but I'm just trying to keep it basic right now. So look at the terms in this series. That looks a lot like 1 over n squared, which I know is a convergent p series because the exponent's bigger than 1. And by adding a 2 in the denominator, each of those terms is actually less than each term in the series 1 over n squared. So I would make my argument like this. 1 over n squared plus 2 is less than 1 over n squared. And the sum of 1 over n squared as n goes from 1 to infinity converges. Therefore, the series that we're looking at also converges. Let's look at the case of divergence. So here I'm con again considering two series An and Bn, but I'm saying the series Bn diverges. And I put that in yellow again. So what I'm looking at there is actually the sequence of partial sums for a divergent series. So these are, these are just going to keep growing and growing and growing. And then I wanted to point out here, it looks like the partial sums for An are actually less than those for Bn for a little bit. But at some point, you cross a line, which I called N here, capital N, where each element of the sequence of partial sums for the As is going to be bigger than for the Bs. And that's all that matters for actually figuring out whether, whether or not this thing converges or diverges in the long run. So I can say after some cut point, the Ans are all bigger than the Bns. So the terms in the sequence of partial sums for the series An are always going to be above those in Bn from, from now on. And if Bn blows up to infinity, in other words, diverges, then An is guaranteed to do that as well. So let's apply this to a straightforward example. I have the sum of 1 over n minus 1. And there's a, there's a slight error here that the first term would be 1 over 0 and the whole thing explodes. So... I don't want it to diverge for a weird reason like that, so I could start at n equals 2 instead. And it doesn't really matter what's going on in the first few n's. What we care is about is the long-run behavior. So this looks a heck of a lot like the harmonic series, and I know that that diverges. And in fact, by subtracting 1 from the denominator, I'm making that fraction bigger than 1 over n. So my argument goes like this. 1 over n minus 1 is going to be bigger than 1 over n because its denominator is smaller. Step 2, the harmonic series 1 over n diverges. Okay, so we've shown that the terms in our sequence are bigger than the terms in a divergent sequence. Therefore, the sequence that we're looking at, n equals 2 to infinity, 1 over n minus 1, diverges as well.